All right, so on UK's turn, they bought one sub, two fighters, and an infantry. <coughs> he did take Burma, uh, Caucasus with the UK, took Egypt heavily, which kind of surprised me a little bit there. Um, and then he came back over here and he took the Solomon Islands. All of that went quite well for him. I don't think he lost any units. None, none, none. Yeah, no units lost. So another another round of no units lost. Um, so what all does that mean? One thing it means is India here is fairly light for me to be able to potentially transport down here and uh, threaten India. And it does mean C zone 36 now has three fighters, a bomber, and a sub that can threaten these guys. And to be honest, I'd be much more comfortable if I had my destroyer there too. So I'm going to be moving my destroyer into that group just for my comfort sake. That leaves me one battleship and a carrier group that I can position where I need to. So I could dump them in 36 as well uh, and just make sure we're extra safe. But that pretty much gives him the, the Solomon Island season, which he'll be happy to take because then he can start doing some, you know, trade sacrifice type stuff uh, in the uh, Money Islands. Or I like to come into season 48. So if I can get into season 48 and have some transports here, they can one, still be threatening India. Two, the big thing is as a carrier here to try and dead zone C-744, fighters go one, two, and can land. Two more fighters that are four zones away from here, one, two, three, four, can join the fight. And then the C-736 will have one, two, three, that then come back and land on the carrier. So they would have six fighters that can uh, hit this area. And then we'll also have a bomber that can hit that area, the battleship carrier that can hit that area. So let me see if I've got that one still on here. That's C zone 44. And then if he moves, he's got a carrier, one cruiser, pair of destroyers, his battleship, and oh, he's got two cruisers. I think I forgot to count about the other cruiser. Yeah, that might change my plan a little bit. And three subs. So, yeah, that's going to change me things up a little bit for me. So I forgot his second cruiser. This is what it's looking like, but I'm thinking I can move a fighter close enough where I can buy a fighter, and then that would make the season look like this now but I did forget a second cruiser. So unfortunately, that's probably going to make it not look quite as well. It makes it iffy. So if I bought another fighter or bomber, that could make a difference here. What if instead of a fighter, what if we bought bomber how much difference does that make not a huge difference as allies I'd still be willing to uh, potentially give this battle if I can't get two airplanes then a bomber would be better but obviously two two airplanes would end up ultimately working better here. That's, I don't know. That'd be tough for him to keep his transports in there at the very least. We might be okay with just buying a, buying a bomber. I may have to play around with my buys a little bit here, so, oops. Yeah, no, that's what I wanted. The fighter buy 
starts to get even a little more iffy. But the bomber buy is not horrible. It, it at least flips it, you know, 5% higher and flips it to a positive value so that, you know, if we threw the transports in there, I don't know if I know this. So here you go. He's got three transports as well that he'd potentially have to, he's trying to protect. You know, that, that goes, that number goes up a good bit, obviously. So we definitely want to buy at least one one plane being a bomber or two planes being fighters. Unfortunately, that changes. I had already kind of set up my purchase, but I may have to relook at that. But the whole point is, is I'd like to dead zone C zone 44 if I can. Uh, having my bomber or my battleship carrier here, he does have a cruiser, sub, and bomber that could hit there, but I feel comfortable with that. This sub uh, will not be able to hit there because I'm going to have my destroyer there, so he won't be able to go through. So, I think we'll have to take a look at that. Um, one of the things we are going to be watching is, you know, what we can do over here. Um, I'm, I was glad he didn't build any navy over here, uh, especially since I only have these two boats. I'm hoping maybe I have the opportunity to bring the battleship this way so it can really start to threaten out that at that direction into the Atlantic. Um, probably won't have much option there. I may have to bring it back here to take care of Egypt. So a number of things that, that, that are going through my mind with all of this. Um, if I can get seven ground into Burma, I'd consider that stacked. Eight would be more ideal. There's seven sitting right here. So one transport uh, grabbing and landing in here would be good. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to actually use my one of my transports. Since we're going to stop in the Phillies rather than grabbing the, the traditional grab the Philippine and come down. I think I'm going to use one of the ones with the tank come down because then the tank can come back up into China and help protect that way a little bit quicker and easier. We do got to make sure to take care of this guy. We'll bring two infantry back and we've got lots of fighters, you know, here to do some battling so we should be fine there and this bomber coming back so between these three guys we should be able to attack pretty heavily he does have his four infantry one fighter threat going on up here um, which i'm going to have to respect that too because he you know, he could hit here you know one two three four and he's back you know over this direction where he wants to be um and because he has so many ground, he can leave this fighter kind of floating around for a little bit. So not, I, I, I'm i tempted to just go ahead and move these guys up here so that if he does attack, he has to use his four stack and send them up this direction versus this way. And then if he comes back this way, then next turn I can always bring them down and bring a transport and some air back uh, if we're not hitting India or zone over here if we do then we're just going to have to balance what we can so this is a little bit this this northern front is a bit weaker than i'd like the only good thing like i said if, if russian hits at one two three four you know he's gonna have to land back you know here at best um right now i've only got 23 25 26 units threatening here and he's got 31 there already plus these guys so it's not like he needs to land the fighter back there all right let's relook at this purchase i was going to do i was going to buy one fighter so we got 34 so we could do Two fighters, a sub, and a destroyer. Versus the one fighter and four subs, so it's one less unit, uh, but gives you more, gives us more range, and eventually we can buy another one or even two carriers for defense. Because you know the good thing if we buy two more fighters, we'll have eight fighters, which is like perfect in my opinion for when you start doing showdowns with the navy because. Then you got four fighters in reserve plus four on the carriers that can hit. So you can have a, a punch of eight fighters to the front line of the Navy. And then when you need more defense, you can build a carrier and boom, you got a loaded carrier group at 14 IPC. So I'm not 
I'm certainly not opposed to buying two fighters right now. Um, and then buying uh, a destroyer submarine. If I know Emray pretty well, if I get an okay dead zone on here, then he will probably pull back into the 58, 59, 57. So good thing with these two is they'll both be able to come back to 60. All right, so yeah, I think we're going to go that route. We could do, what, a bomber, and then 22 would be a sub and two destroyers. So I could trade two fighters and instead get a bomber destroyer out of it. Bomber destroyer instead of two subs. I mean, instead of two fighters. But I think I'd rather the two fighters. It gives me an even better punch, and they, they pair with my carriers nicely right now. And until we're in fleet gone mode, the, the defensive hit points of the fighters will be better. So we're going to go this route. Two, three, four, five. These guys are for sure hitting that one. So we're going to have two fighters landing here. We need two fighters able to come back and land in 48. This fighter can't hit anything. We could take a cheap shot on the cruiser now that I look at that. I didn't even think about that. That fighter bomber shot on the cruiser is mighty tempting. But I don't think we will. So this is going to be one fighter coming back to 48. So one of these fighters needs to be able to come back. So we'll have, have him hit here so he can come back to 48. We got two fighters there. So we'll need at least number three there. One, two, three. I guess slip for a second here. The more I think about it, the more I really do like the idea of being able to take out this transport at fairly low cost. Even though it's the UK one, this is also a transport that's eventually going to be trying to get back to the U to the Atlantic. He's already got one over there. He's got another one heading over there. That'd be his third one heading over there. And so he doesn't have to buy any transports to get a full Atlantic up and going. And that's kind of a bummer. I'd rather him have to spend money on that. Uh, and I got plenty of air going. And if he does get a hit and I take out a fighter for a cruiser transport, kind of okay with that. The fighter cruiser are fairly equal, you know, for him defending me attacking, which is the important part right now. So I think the one thing I got to be ready for, though, is that if I lose the fighter, I need one fighter that can fly up and land on sea zone on these islands still because I do still need to have one more fighter up towards the front um, and even if I if I didn't do that and I didn't kill the cruiser I needed to get one more fighter that can get up towards the front front here um, and any of these fighters attacking can't do that so I think we're going to take him off. So we still got two fighters going in here against the two, but I think, you know, I'm pretty confident we want to go ahead and do this. And that should give me enough living that his eight units attacking back um, is attacking into, you know, at least 
at least seven, if not eight or nine ground units. So I feel so that I feel good about that. And who knows, maybe we'll bring a second transport down here too to put a tank down here as well, just to add a little threat if everything goes well. We'll see what the odds on, a, on India just are exactly. I'm I'm really debating with myself on this part up here. I'm coming back to this one again. Because if I go up here and he hits here and he brings his navy up this direction, it's going to be hard for... I can't go back up to 63 to counter him. I could just pull them back and give him these, but that's going to cost me one here now and then it gives him two three next turn so that's a cost of three there just to pull back decisions decisions still kind of like this idea I don't know. I know the rule is I really when you're when you're in KJF and you're Japan, you really, really, really want to be thinking about conserve your units, conserve your units, conserve your units. Um, But I think it's just slightly more advantageous to here because I can pull back to this direction if I need to next turn. I don't know. This may be a weakness I'm exposing myself to up here. This, this, this may be trouble. I may be misplaying this. Time will tell. Time will tell. All right. I think everything else is locked in. I just cannot let this go unpunished. Just being a freebie there. This fighter goes one, two, three, four. This fighter can land there. If they both live by chance, this fighter, two fighters, two fighters here can go to 48. So our carrier there will be loaded. The two fighters here will go to 36. Where am I missing a fighter? Oh, the two being built are my two going the four. That makes sense. So two here, two up front, two on 48, two on 36. That gives me my eight that can pressure 44 minus whatever happens here. All right, I feel better now. Now I, now I got myself locked in. Although here I go questioning this again. <laughs> Y'all getting getting tired of me questioning myself here. Because the other thing here is this guy is going to be unprotected, right? So he'll be able to do a U.S. attack. Although I feel like he's going to want to put his fighter in here with this fighter coming up. But he could attack here. And if U.S. won that, then he's got nothing stopping him from going here next turn. Other than me having to move many survivors here up this way. And, but we'll have this one. We'll move, uh, all right, we're just, you know what? We're just going to do it. I'm questioning myself too much. I'm thinking too hard here. Just do it. Lock it in. Lock it in and you'll be done with it. I'm probably going to curse myself <laughs> in a little bit here, though.
this really is a lot more games I normally play at one time, and my brain just starts questioning everything, especially as many good players as I'm playing right now one at the same time. So, <clears throat> all right, there we go. So that gives us seven units sitting there. I feel pretty good about that, so I don't need to move anything else down there, although I might use a transport to put the tank in Thailand. No hit back, no hit back. Five, five, five. Oh, yeah. All right. Gambling pays off. I don't want to land my fighter, my bomber there though, because I got no ground cover. Can land there. We still got our four we can transfer, but why not throw an A on the Philippines? You know, maybe it'll be useful at some point. Maybe that's wasteful. That probably is wasteful. I like to take it around and be annoying with it. I normally come back with it. Yeah, let's leave our... I do that when we can do that better yet. All right, so we got one. Two, three being built. This guy would not be able to make it. Four, five here. Six, seven here. My bomber can go one, two, three, four, five, six, five, six, five, six. So my bomber will be able to make it. So we got the seven fighters, one bomber, but he's down to minus that one cruiser. Let's see what that meant again. I, I... I'll have one cruiser. Two destroyers, three subs. Battleship carrier, two fighters. We get the seven fighter. So yeah, so that brings us back to this kind of looking thing. Now he'll have some subs live, but we take out any transports. 80% chance we take out any transports he had hanging out in there. So we got two transports, battleship and carrier here, right? Yep, check, check, check. We got battleship loaded carrier and destroyer here. Check, check, check. Landed our two ground. We got fighter bomber so that if he did the four attack, that would be kind of costly. We 
we've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 ground squaring up with him. 5, 6 air, so 20 units staring him down here at his 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 that he builds. 13 could make it there. 14, 15 units that he could get there. I feel pretty good about that. I like that setup. I, we're putting a lot of pressure on J3 India, which, you know, India is not always a great thing for Japan and a KJF, but if I can get a J3, I might be more, more inclined to keep that into consideration. But of course, he's also going to make moves up here that I got consider countering and, you know, moves in here right at the counter. So we'll see. Now, my destroyer I need to take into consideration here real quick. <clears throat> if I put him here, he can do the three fighters and land and then bring all his fleet together in either 58 or 59. Do I have them dead zoned enough? So these two, we would have one two, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So these two fighters would be my four moves. This would be a two and land. We'd have two there, so we'd still have two. We'd actually have all eight fighters shooting them down. Because these two can just go and land, two, at four range, four, two more at two range, and two more at three range. So we would have eight, nine, ten, bomber, one, two, three, four. Yeah, bomber's good. So we have 11 units all together there. Eight fighters, one bomber. We got our carrier and battleship. He can't block them. So he would be moving a battleship. Is the same thing as it's all the same that he could have down here, right? Except for one less sub, actually. So he wouldn't have this one. He'd have one less sub that could go there. He'd have the two destroyers. He'd have two subs. He'd have his battleship, his carrier, and his cruiser. So we should have that dead zoned. So I think I will go ahead and drop him here. Because otherwise he's got to move his carrier into one. If he does kill it, he's got to move his carrier into one of those. And I've got them both dead zoned with everything right now. So we're dead zoning, we're dead zoning, we're dead zoning, and we're dead zoning here. The problem is if, if he moves into one and stays here, we can't really do both of them, right? Because our, our, we need our air to do one or the other. So we'd have decision time there. And then also... We got the threat of him coming down this way. So although we got some nice strong dead zones on the front fleet, and we got a nice threat on J3 India, there's definitely weaknesses because we can't do all three. All right, sorry, this is a little bit of a longer turn. I really had to kind of think some things through here.